good fields need good problems. Good fields are actually defined by their problems, not by their methods, not by their theories. Information science has a great set of problems. We laugh through computing, we mourn through computing, we do most of the things that we care about and have traditionally regarded as sort of fundamentally social acts through computing. If you care about justice, if you care about equality, uh, if you care about innovation and social change, you increasingly have to think about computing because that's gonna be a key driver of those things, a key enabler of those things, and sometimes a key barrier to realizing those things. That gives us a great starting point for building a, a really dynamic and effective field. And it makes it an exciting place to be. Most of my questions center on uh, the place at which emergent technological infrastructures engage existing systems of social practice and meaning. And a lot of that work is supported under grants, the Ford Foundation, the National Science Foundation, the stimulus funding, and a couple of other smaller grants. And so there's, this is a growing area of investment uh, among science funders around the world. This semester in the fall, I'm teaching our graduate core course for our doctoral program called Information Technology and Society. That course is basically an effort to take the best of the social sciences, engage students in the roots of that thinking, what are the key theories and the key approaches that have characterized this, and then take that and apply it to questions of technology and questions of information science today. So it ends up being a very lively class. It ends up being a pretty engaging class. It ends up being a pretty unpredictable class because I'm, I'm used to how uh, sort of traditional social science students read this stuff. That's what I was at one point in time. Uh, I'm not always used to uh, how uh, somebody coming out of a, a, an engineering background or a computer science background are going to engage with this stuff. Fun is a greatly underrated virtue in academic departments. We don't usually say their biology department is really fun or that physics department, that's really fun. That math department, wow. But I think uh, Cornell IS is actually fun and it's fun partly because of the, the combination of, of people and personalities involved, new buildings, new campuses. I think that, that some of that energy trickles down to the undergraduate level. It certainly uh, trickles down to the graduate uh, PhD level. Uh, and we as faculty uh, encounter it uh, and, and thrive on it. In some places, if you go into a graduate program, the limits of the graduate program more or less are the limits of your world. You, maybe you go take a course outside the department. But the opportunity for meaningful connections across campus are often limited. Cornell has world-leading faculty in many of the adjacent areas that, that sort of help structure this field. Computer science, communication, sociology, and IS has been very good at, at, at drawing in those strengths. I would say the primary reason to be in an information science PhD is because your problems require you to be. You need the kind of interdisciplinary range and training uh, for the purposes of what you care about. If you can walk into a computer science class and an art history class and think of some interesting connections between them, then information science is the kind of place that can really support that kind of integration.